Today we're going to take a look at how to pause your game. We have to give our player a chance to rest, right? Well, we don't really need to, but we'll do it anyway because we're nice. Let's get into it. What's up everybody? Welcome to MyPixel. As always, it's awesome to have you here. Let's get started by taking a quick look at the pause screen that I made for us to use in today's tutorial. So the pause screen is set as its own scene, which you'll see here. So uh, scroll down a little bit here. Okay, so once again, it's its own scene to which we have attached a script. Under that, we're going to have a color rect. Uh, this is simply set to a semi-transparent white here, just to make it a little bit easier to see a uh, little bit of visual feedback that we did pause the game. Under that is a margin container, which really wasn't needed, but I added it in any way because uh, it's kind of a force of habit. Inside of that margin container is a center container, and inside of that center container is a VBox container. And then finally, inside of the VBox container, we have two menu options. You'll see here, resume and quit. Uh, for those menu options, I created them with texture buttons. Now, if you want more details about how to set up a menu screen similar to this one, I'll go ahead and leave a link in the description to another video that I did where I made a very similar menu screen and I used it as a title screen instead. Now that we've seen that, we can get into the coding for the pause screen. So let's jump into our pause scene script here. Just a quick note about the code that's already in here. The methods that you see here, which are grab focus and is hovered, right? Both of these methods or functions, as you can probably see, are being used on the texture buttons here. We won't be going into what these methods do as the focus of today's tutorial is on pausing the game, but I'll go ahead and leave a link in the description to the video that explains what this code does in case you haven't watched it already. Today we're going to use the input function to enable the pause. I'm just going to go ahead and get all of this code typed in and then I'll explain what it all means. So if you stand by here and I can get this typed out. So we'll start off with the function input event. So if event is action pressed UI cancel uh, what are we going to do? We're going to first put this in here copy and paste that's pretty f make sure I don't make any mistakes and we're going to say get tree dot paused equals not get tree dot paused and we're going to say visible equals not visible So to explain what this all means, let's go ahead and start with the input function. Up until now, I believe I haven't introduced the input function. I don't think I've covered it in, in, in any one of the other video tutorials that I've done. But basically all it is, is it detects an input event, which is something like a mouse click, keyboard press, or you press a button on the gamepad. Then it sends that event, or well, anytime that event comes in, it will process whatever code we have inside of this function. So we have if event is action pressed UI cancel. UI cancel is one of the default mappings that's currently mapped to the escape key. So but then basically what this line means is if somebody pressed the escape key, then what we're gonna do here is we're gonna tell the first texture button to grab focus. And then next here, we're gonna try and pause our game. So the get tree dot paused, um, I don't know what you would call this, a, a property? But uh, in, in any case, this uh, is the pause state for the game. So this, this is a Boolean value, it can be either true or false. This line of code that we have here actually will both pause and unpause the game. By using the operator not, 
on a Boolean variable, we can switch the value to false if it's true or to true if it's false. So if our game is currently not paused, this will pause the game. If the game is paused, then it will unpause the game. Pretty cool, right? Now our pause screen first starts out as hidden or made to just not be visible when the game is not paused. When we pause the game, we will then show the pause screen. So here again, by using the not, we set the pause screen to visible if it's not currently visible, or we set it to not be visible if it currently is visible, right? So this just goes along with the, uh, the pause state. If we're not paused, we want to pause and we want to see the pause screen. If we're paused and we can see the pause screen, we want to unpause and then we want to go ahead and hide the pause screen. Now that we have that out of the way, let's go ahead and add our pause screen to our stage one scene here or our main game scene, what, whatever you have chosen to call yours. So to here, to make this work, we're going to go ahead, oh, wrong one. We're going to add a node to the scene. The node we're going to add is a canvas layer. Canvas layer, okay. All right, and then to the canvas layer, we're going to go ahead and instant instance the pause screen scene. So we can just go ahead and drag it onto the canvas layer. So now the pause screen is a child of the canvas layer. You can see here. So if we were to run our game now, you can see that the pause screen is already there, right? This is not what we want. We want it to be hidden like we just talked about. So we'll just go ahead and toggle the visibility off. And with that, we're ready to go ahead and run our game and uh, yeah, just let's just run our game and see what we've got. Okay, so here we have our game. We hit the escape key. All right, we pause our game. Right, now we said that the escape key can pause and unpause our game, so we'll hit the escape key again. But we get nothing, right? So the escape key was supposed to pause and unpause our game. We're, we're able to pause our game and stop it, run it again. Escape key once pauses our game. Escape key again does nothing, right? We can't unpause the game. So why is that? Well, let's go ahead and take a look. Let's jump back into the pause screen here and then into our script. Okay, so what happened is this. This get tree dot pause state, right? So the pause state of our game. This is for everything in the entire game. It doesn't ignore the pause screen because it doesn't know that your pause screen is supposed to actually be a pause screen. So uh, when you say that something is paused, that means it stops the processing or any processing that it's doing. So your game stops processing, right? As you could see, the characters in the background stop moving, right? So then they resume, or after they resume, everything would be fine right where it left off. As far as the pause screen, we still need the pause screen to keep processing because it needs to process additional events, right? We send the escape key event, it pauses, but if we can no longer process anything, including any more escape key or any more input events, then we'll never see the escape key and we'll never be able to unpause the game. Of course, there's a way to fix that though. So if you select the pause screen node and then go over here to the inspector under the pause section. Can we scroll down a little bit more? No, we can't. Okay, so the pause section, we see we have this mode. If we try and select this here, it gives us three options. So the first option is inherit. And by default, all nodes in Godot are going to be set to inherit. What inherit means is that they will inherit the pause state of their parent. For today's setup, we don't want this, obviously, right? It was set to inherit, it didn't work. So forget that. The next, we have stop, which means that when the game is paused, it doesn't matter what the pause state of the parent is, this node will become paused and stop processing. 
now we really don't want this to happen, right? That, that would make this thing never work. So we throw that one out. And then all that we're going to have left is the process option. Now this setting will make it so that the node will never pause and will continue processing regardless of the pause state of the parent. So this is what we want, right? <laughs> yeah, it is. So now that we found that this is the one we want, we'll set it to process. Now, with that set, let's run our game and then see what happens. Okay, we got it running here with the escape key. Pause our game. If we hit the escape key again, it it works, right? Great. So pause, unpause, pause, unpause. Fantastic. Now, this is great, but I think that we should uh, go ahead and make use of these uh, great looking texture buttons that I have here. They currently don't do anything because we haven't programmed them to do anything. So let's go wire them up or uh, code them up really quick. Jump out of here. Okay. We'll just go ahead into these texture buttons and we'll go ahead and wire up the button press signal to the pause screen. Texture button two will do the same. Wire up the press signal to the pause screen. Okay, we can get rid of this pass. Okay, so we're working on the uh, what happens when you hit the the first texture button here. Now the first texture button was the option to resume. So we're going to want this thing to do the exact same thing that happens when you unpause. So because of that, we can just go ahead and copy and paste these two lines, the one to uh, pause and unpause the game and the one to hide and unhide the uh, pause screen. We can just go ahead and paste that in there. It's got too many tabs. We need to take that down level. All right. And then with the texture button two, texture button two's, um, yeah, it, it was uh, to exit the game. So uh, because I don't have any title screen or anything wired up to this, let's just go ahead and use this texture button to quit the whole game. So we'll just quickly type in get tree dot quit. Now let's go ahead and run our game and see what we've got. So we hit the escape key, use my mouse here. I can resume my game. That works fine. If you want, you can also use the keyboard, right? So I can resume my game. If I hit escape, if I hit it, if I hit escape again, that will also resume the game. If I hit escape, I can go to quit. Quits out of my game. I think that's that's everything. It's working exactly like how we want it to. Now we can use the escape key and our buttons work too. Now one thing to note here is that the color of the color rect that's used here for the pause screen has an alpha value of 127 which makes it semi-transparent so that you can still see your game in the background. If for some reason you don't like this you can just go ahead and change that color rect, uh, change the alpha value to a value of 255 or fully opaque. Um, you might want to do this for example maybe you have a puzzle game that has like a timer on there and you might not want the player to be able to both pause the game and also peek at the actual game screen because then they'd be able to solve the puzzle while it was paused or they'd be able to cheat in that way. Maybe something similar to that. I hope you all found this video helpful. If you liked it, please give it a like and subscribe so that you don't miss out on what's coming up next. Also, the sprites, source code, and everything else that I've used in the tutorial today is available for download on my Patreon page. So if you want to check that out and also support the channel, I'll make sure to leave a link in the description. So thanks to everyone for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.